Hi guys, happy Thursday afternoon. Thank you for joining me today on the Jesse James Speeds Facebook page. Today we are making a really cool pair of earrings. I am so excited to show these to you guys. I um, actually was supposed to put a link, Sarah, if you're out there, <laughs> and I'm hoping you are. I, I completely forgot to put the link for the supplies for this project. But if you go to the Jesse James Speeds website, um, down in the bottom, there is a little link where you can click on all of the things that you need to make the project for today. And, um, hi, hi Debbie, hi Joan. I'm always happy to see everybody there, Sarah. Hey Sarah, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just, yeah, I completely, I, I messed up on that one, so my bad. Um, so yeah, let's get to it. We're gonna make a project. We're using some of the beads from, hi Steph, hi Suzanne. We're using beads from the Waikiki. And unfortunately, you guys, I had to take them out of the package. A lot of times I have the package still ready to go or the strand ready to go. And I did not put these back and staple them back today. So I am gonna dump them out so you guys can see them. And then I have the strand here too. And I'll show this one to you guys up close. I know Sarah showed these, but it doesn't hurt to show them again because they're so pretty. And it's really hard for you guys to see them at this angle, but I'll show them to you when we when we turn the camera down here. So, like I said, we're doing earrings today. We're gonna do a hemp project and we're doing square knots. And I'm gonna try to break down the knots for you guys as best as I can so that it's really easy to follow along. We're gonna start on a straight piece of wire just to kind of show you the knot a step at a time. And then we're gonna go over to the actual component. These earrings are made from large size bracelet memory wire. So you don't have to make your own component or anything. We're just gonna snip some memory wire and that's gonna give you the circle, the nice little ring all ready to go. So you don't have to worry with that part. That's one of my favorite things to do with memory wire um, is to use it you know, for earrings and other things. So really, really cool, super easy to do. And the knot, once you get the hang of it, it's easy to do as well. So I hope you guys will enjoy this project. I wanna show you all these beads up close. And then I'm also gonna show you guys the shark tooth. Now I actually talked about this uh, like an hour ago. <laughs> over on my Facebook and so those of you all who were not there because there's a lot of you that were not there and that's you know that's that's neither here nor there but I'm gonna talk about this guy some more because it's just pretty awesome you guys this is um, handmade and there's only according to Sarah she says there's only a few of these so if you want one of these get one of these now these are not included in any of the little mixes. This guy, you have to buy all on its own. I wish you guys, there, oh, that's good. That's a better shot you can see without that light blaring away. But you guys, this shark's tooth, and I know I'm holding, so you can't really see the bottom of it. Okay, first of all, it's huge, not like so big you wouldn't want to use it, but it's this is a really substantial sized pendant and what's awesome about it is that it is really lightweight a lot of times people will see big pendants and they're like scared off from them because you know a lot of times if you've you've made a long necklace it can put pressure on the back of your neck and by the end of the day you know you can have a headache from that people don't realize that jewelry has has the ability to give you a headache I know firsthand so <clears throat> this guy is really lightweight and like I said, this is handmade. This is a pottery piece, which is pretty amazing um, There's only a few of these, you know, this was a collaboration with an artist and Jesse James beads They put this together specifically for you guys specifically for this Hawaiian destination collection and it's really really an awesome awesome piece I talked a little bit earlier about how um, I read somewhere that we're not making vintage, you know, we're not making things that one day will be vintage and I don't buy that because there are things like this that are available that Jesse James Beads makes accessible to everybody, you know? So I don't know about you, but I'm making jewelry that's going to be vintage one day. <laughs> okay. Okay. Enough, enough, enough. Let's get on with the project because this is a fun one. You guys, I'm excited. Let me move the camera. Let's see. All right flip you guys around and adjust the light just a little bit hold on there we go 
All right, so first things first, look at this strand. I didn't use this strand in this collection, I mean in this um, jewelry piece, but I have it because it goes with the rest of this Waikiki. And this is one of those two tiered deals. And so this was on the top. And I'm gonna dump it out. I do have some of these pulled out because I'm gonna use them, but I just wanted to show you guys I know Sarah showed you, but you know, just look how pretty. <laughs> I love this. This has that electroplating on it. And there's another one of the collections that's got, we're using these cowrie shell beads that came with this collection as well, or with this mix in the collection. And there's another one. Let's see. Let me grab it. Mm -hmm. The... Mauna Loa, I'm, I'm totally tearing that apart. I cannot talk, but look at the cowrie beads. Those are electroplated. Aren't those awesome? Those are super, super cool. So I was like, I couldn't decide if I was gonna use those or if I was gonna use these, but I thought that with the hemp, this would probably be a good choice, but you really could go either way. Either one of these would be good. Okay, so that's what we're going to use. This was from the smaller portion of that pack. And there were also these little guys. We're going to use some of these little starfish in our earring today. And we're going to use one of the tassels. So they're super, super pretty. And then the rest of this collection, this little collection in itself. I keep saying collection because this is a collection within a collection. You know what I mean. See if I can show that to you guys better. There you go. So this is in that bottom tier of the packaging. It has these shell beads that are awesome and they're drilled so you have a hole which is fantastic. And then the Chinese crystals, there's just so much. I'm really drawn to this like kind of muted blue, very oceany, you know, which is obviously what they were going for. But it's one of my favorite colors is, you know, the muted blues. Absolutely love. So it was a no brainer for me picking this out, but you know what? This collection or this mix might not be for everybody. Lucky for us, there are a ton of selections in this collection to choose from a lot of different colorways. So you could make these earrings with any of them, but oh, I'm so in love with that. Isn't that pretty? It really just doesn't come across on camera. My camera is weird too. It keeps going out of making the color strange, but all right, on to it. Let's do it guys. Let's make some earrings. Move you back here a little bit. Move this out of the way. Okay, so we are going to work on making a component like this, okay? And this is just memory wire. I'm going to show you how I cut the memory wire. I'm going to show you every single step of this process, okay? But this is where we're headed. And then we're going to finish up with this really awesome beachy earring, okay? I think these are so fun. And we were talking about lightweight stuff. This is a super lightweight earring. So you don't have to worry. Just because it's big doesn't, make it, doesn't mean that it's heavy, okay? All right, so... Let's talk about the memory wire first. I know we've touched on memory wire a little bit before, but it never hurts to do a refresher on memory wire. Memory wire is tempered steel, and this is not something that you wanna cut with your regular cutter tool. You only wanna use cutters that are specifically designed to cut memory wire. So I have memory wire shears specifically for this purpose okay do not use your regular cutters it will nick the blade and they will never cut good again <laughs> they will never cut well again I cannot talk today all right so to get the piece that we want the memory wire always comes in a, in a long like slinky strand okay all we want is just one complete section so we want one complete loop in order to get a complete loop right where that piece starts, okay, we wanna cut on this piece where it meets. So right there is where we wanna put our cutter tool to cut that, okay, so let me show you. I'm gonna bring my cutter tool in and I'm lined up right up against where that strand of wire starts. And then I'm just gonna snip it, <coughs> excuse me. And then when I pull it away, I've got a singular piece, okay? 
and that's what we're going for. If you cut it too short, you're going to end up with not a full circle of an earring. You want to make sure that you leave all of that because we're going to take this and roll this back on each end to make our loops here. Okay. And if you cut your section too short, it's not going to be a full circle. It's going to look kind of funny. I did that. Um, the first time around when I made these earrings, I didn't use a full circle of memory wire, and I just didn't think that it looked as good. So you can try it if you want to, but I just kind of preferred it this way. Okay, so we're going to take the ends, and we're going to go ahead and roll back, making loops on both ends. You can use your round nose pliers for this, or you can use memory wire finishing pliers. It makes no difference. I'm going to take the end of the memory wire with my round nose pliers and just grab it. And you can see I'm... I'm making sort of a medium size loop here and I'm just going to roll back. Uh oh. Okay, so we're just creating a loop here at the top. I didn't roll all the way. And that's going to keep, if you were making a bracelet, um, it would keep all of your beads on. But for the purpose of our earrings, this is going to be a connection for us. We're actually going to connect um, jump rings to this. And I didn't get that fully closed. So this is large size bracelet memory wire. Okay, There is a smaller bracelet sized, but this is the large. I really, really like a larger hoop earring, but if that's not your thing, you can certainly go down to the size small, but this is just your standard large size. That's pretty much what you're going to find when you shop for memory wire. And this is the size that Jesse James Speeds has on their website. Okay, so I made the loop here. I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other side just to go ahead so that we have those loops ready to go. I'm going to try to make that loop the same size as the first one. And this is tempered steel, so you can see it's it's taking a lot of force, you know, to make that loop. This is not like using artistic wire. My loops are not exactly the same, but that's okay, okay? I'm not a stickler for things like that because nobody in the end is ever going to notice. Okay, so this is what we're going to start with, but before we start making the knots on this, I want to start on a piece of flat wire because I want to show you guys step by step because it is a little bit different once you start working on a curved surface, okay? So this is just for practice. This is just our practice piece, okay? So it really doesn't matter what size this wire is or any of that. I actually don't really know. I think it might be as a piece of 18 gauge, but it makes no difference. Because <clears throat> like I said, we're just practicing on this. It's just a straight piece of wire and I'm using some hemp. Now, hemp is one of those things that doesn't come, you don't buy it by diameter necessarily. You can, but the way that it's listed on most packaging is by the pound. Not meaning um, the pound as like you're buying it by the pound, but meaning that's the strength of the hemp itself. And so it's a lot like when you're buying fishing line. That's just what I kind of equate it to. When you buy fishing fishing line, you want to buy, you know, a, a pound strength. That's the way you buy your hemp. So this is a, this is a 36 pound hemp, if that makes any sense at all. I hope that it does. It's kind of weird to equate fishing with jewelry making, but you know, everybody uses, <laughs> everybody uses wire and string and, you know, things of that nature. So in the industry, if you're looking, this is uh, how they measure it. And like I said, that's 36 pounds. So what I'm assuming is that means that this will hold 36 pounds of pressure before it breaks in half. Okay. So this is not super, super thin stuff. This is kind of on the medium size. All right. Anyway, moving on a square knot. A lot of people are familiar with the square knot, but for those of you who are not, I'm going to walk you through this step by step before we move on to the earring. A square knot happens in two steps, so the entire knot takes two steps. That's important to know because if you only do one of the steps, you're doing a different kind of knot, okay? So I've already got this tied on and I had two started, but that's okay. We're gonna start with our strand on the right. So you would tie, go ahead and tie your um, 
hemp to your work surface, whatever you're working on. And obviously you're gonna need to find the middle. I'm sorry, I meant to give you that. You're gonna need for these earrings, you're gonna need 60 inches of hemp. This takes quite a bit of hemp. Okay, so 60 inches and then find the middle and tie your knot right at the middle just onto your surface. You can tie an overhanded knot, makes no difference, just so that you have one end on one side and one end on the other side. Okay, so you're gonna take your right hand of your thread and you're going to create a P shape. The P shape is with the strand, the right-handed strand, and the stick of the P is the piece that you're working on, okay? And you wanna lay this across the top of the wire, okay? Then you're gonna take your left-handed strand and you wanna go behind your wire, okay? And up through the P that you just made, okay? So when you pull everything together, you have tied the first half of your knot, okay? Now that's just the first half. Now the second half, we're doing the same thing, but we're gonna do this going the other direction. So we're gonna take our left string across the surface. We're going across the top of that wire to create that, sh that P shape with the wire and the hemp. Then we're gonna take our right-handed strand. We wanna go behind. You wanna go underneath your wire and up through the P, okay? Up through the bubble of your P. And then you're gonna pull to create your knot. And that's the two steps that create the full knot, okay? I'm gonna do that a few more times just so those of you who have never done macrame knots before can get the hang of it, okay? I don't wanna move on until we're ready to go with this, okay? So let's do it one more time. We're gonna take the right hand coming over the surface of the wire, okay? So we're making the bubble here. There's the stick, that's the wire going across the top, okay? And now I'm gonna pick this up and hold it in my hand because when we're working with the memory wire, it's round and you have to hold it, okay? So get used to holding everything in your hands while you're working. It's not like tying this down to the tying station. Okay, so we're gonna take the left hand side, we're going behind the wire, or yeah, we are, we're going behind the wire and then up through the bubble of our P and then we're gonna pull. Okay, and hemp is one of those things that you do have to work with it a little bit. You know, it's not just gonna pull smoothly. You may have to coax both sides, okay? So that was the first step. The second step works the same way, just on the opposite side. So left hand strand goes across the top of the wire. Okay. And now the right hand strand is gonna go behind the wire and up through. Okay. And now we're gonna pull. All right, how's everybody feeling about that? I can do that one more time before we move on over to the memory wire itself, okay? Because I just wanna be sure that everybody gets that knot because really this is an easy knot to do and I have found that in jewelry making, I use this knot for a lot of different things. So this, this is a good one to learn just to always have, you know? All right, one more time. We're gonna take it, make in the P, okay? Going back behind with our left-handed strand and up through. Oh, <laughs> I messed that one up. Let's try that again. <laughs> All right, going across the P. It's okay, everybody does it. And then we're going behind and up through. I did it again. I wasn't catching that side, sorry. Not paying attention here. All right, there we go. Okay. Now, if you get stuck, okay, and you forget where you're going, if you forget which side, say, I put this down, I'm done, I've had an emergency, I've gotta step away from the desk for a minute, okay? The way to know which side is next is you're gonna follow the bump. See the bump here? The little curve guy. This guy, let me get my beady all. 
this little bump right here tells me that I'm ready to make the P on this side. It doesn't mean I've already made the P on this side. It means it's time for the P to come over to this side now, okay? So when the bump is on this side, I'm ready to make a P over here, okay? So if you ever walk away from your project, you can always come back and know what step you're ready to go to, okay? So because this little bump says so, we're gonna make the P over here. So we're doing the loop underneath and back up through and then we're going to pull. Okay. All right, so now let's take this over to our earring component, okay? It's a lot different. It well, it it's the same knot, but it feels different. And it's it's going to feel different when you're working with it if you've never macrameed on a round surface before. It does feel kind of strange at first. Now, I've already gotten this one started, and I'm just gonna work on it a little bit because it does take some time. This is a project that you can, you can probably whip this up in about 30 minutes, but I'm not gonna make you guys sit here for 30 minutes to watch me make knots, okay? <laughs> so I'm just gonna show you a few knots on this guy, and then I'm gonna show you the finished one, okay? Let's see, I feel like I missed a question. Hold on, I'm gonna back it up a little bit. Oh, Charlene says she's watched a lot of people and couldn't do it, but I understand you. I'm so glad. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What other uses for this knot? Well, so a lot of times in bead weaving, for instance, doing just one side of this knot is considered a half hitch and i use a half hitch knot for a lot of things so for instance just you know just doing the one side and pulling through just one side of the p that's usually how i end my um my thread if i'm bead weaving and then i'll stitch through through a few more beads before i burn it off you know i use like a thread burner to burn the end off um, anytime you want two strands attached to something, this is the perfect knot for it. Because once you get that square knot tied, it's not going to come undone. It's, it's a really secure, good knot to use. All right, so let's make some of the knots on this curved component. And like I said, it's exactly the same knot, but there's a difference. It just feels different when you're working on a piece that is curved. Okay, same thing. We're going to take the right-handed side, okay, and we're going across. You're also working on a smaller surface here. So you're going across the top of the memory wire hoop, and now you're going behind and up through the P. <laughs> I keep doing that. How do I miss that every time? <laughs> Okay, going across the top, down over the top of, we're going across the top of this one. That makes sense now. And then we're going up through the P. Okay, and then we're gonna pull. So essentially you're tying the knot around this component just like you are with that wire. Okay, or if it was a third piece of hemp because a lot of these pieces, a lot of hemp macrame designs you're knotting on another piece of hemp if that makes sense that's usually it's a third strand of hemp that is your the core okay so we're going to do this one more time or the second step of our p so there's the p going across the surface over the top of everything over the tail okay and then up through the p My nails match the bead mix. <laughs> yes, they do. That was unintentional, but yes, they do. <laughs> yeah, I have blue nails today. My nails are in really bad shape, you guys, so don't, don't judge too harshly. <laughs> All right, so we're going to do one more. Okay, across the surface. You can see I'm going across the surface of the memory wire, okay? Now I'm gonna take my left-handed strand. It's coming across the top of the tail of my right piece. 
and behind the memory wire and up through the circle P that we made and you're going to pull. Okay. One more step to complete our knot here. Same thing, just on the other side. Okay. This guy's going across the tail, back behind and up through. Now the good thing is, is that you can always watch this on replay and you can watch over and over again the knot until you get it, you know? Okay, so you're just gonna continue on all the way around your component until you get up here to the end. Now, let me caution you about getting to the end. When you get to the end and you're working on those last knots, because the hemp is kind of bulky and the memory wire is kind of thin and you're coming down and you've only got maybe a centimeter, a few centimeters here to work with, it is kind of hard to keep your knot on here. But don't, you know, don't get frustrated with it. You can also kind of squish your hemp back a little bit to give yourself some more room and then you can, you know, you can push it back out again, okay? So you may have a little trouble at the end. It's not anything horrible, but you may notice that you run out of space here at the end when you're trying to make your knots and then when you go to pull your knot, you're missing the wire, okay? Just be aware that that can happen. Okay, so I have one that is finished, and I wanted to show you guys how to finish this off, okay? So I'm up here at my very last knot. I haven't done anything with the strands, okay? I've just cut them off just a little bit. So now you wanna decide what's gonna be the front and what's gonna be the back, and they pretty much look exactly the same, but a lot of times one side will be a little bit prettier <laughs> than the other side, you know? So, you just pick one that looks the best. I'm gonna make this the back. Okay, so when you decide what the back is, all you have to do is you're gonna take your two strands, and this is, again, this is on the back. You just wanna take the two strands and tie them together, just an overhanded knot. You wanna pull that down to the surface. Okay, so it's sitting on the very back of the last knot that you made, okay? And you wanna give that a nice tug and then you wanna come in with your hypo cement, okay? Now, somebody earlier today, and I'm sorry that I forgot who because it's been a really long day. We were talking in the Secret Stash group about hypo cement and all the uses for hypo cement and why I choose this over some of the other glues that are available. Um, hypo cement will not eat through plastic. That's probably the number one reason why I go for hypo cement. It's gentle on fabric, so you can use this with leather, you can use this with hemp, you can use it um, with just about anything, and it doesn't, it doesn't change necessarily the texture of the piece, if that makes any sense. You know how when you use super glue, specifically on hemp, it will harden it up. It just makes it hard and just I don't know, it, it just makes it not feel so good. And if you're gonna put glue in a place that's gonna be up against your skin, I definitely recommend the hypo cement over super glue. The super glue just makes it scratchy and rough, whereas the hypo cement doesn't. It, it makes a really nice adhesive, but it doesn't necessarily change the structure of the piece at all. And it also doesn't leave that nasty haze that sometimes super glue can use. Um, another reason that I like the hypo cement is because it has this precision tip on it. Mine gets kind of gross and nasty, but that's okay. You only get a little bit out at a time. And in a situation like this where we have a little, a very small knot, all you want is just tiny little drops of this glue. Okay. You don't have to squeeze it. You just use the heat of your hand to heat up the bottle and it will just drip out on its own. Okay. And so I just want to put this on the places where this knot may come undone. And honestly, it's not going to. You could do this without adding any glue, but I do like the extra support of the glue. Okay, you can see it's wet, so I can see where I placed it, but it's gonna dry clear. And um, again, we were talking earlier about stretch cord and stretch bracelets. We're gonna do a video about that coming up soon because that's something that everybody asked about. Um, the glue for that, you definitely want to use hypo cement. I cannot seem to, there we go. 
you definitely want to use hypo cement on your um, monofilament and your stretch any kind of stretch that you're using whether it's the alonga or your magic stretch or your elastic cords of any kind because super glue and some of the other glues like gorilla glue it will eat through a monofilament and it will eat through a plastic i have learned that the hard way so Sorry if I'm carrying on a long time about hypo, hypo cement, but somebody asked, this is my number one go-to glue for just about any kind of jewelry making. It lasts a really, really long time. It does get gunky at the top, but it's worth it. It's totally, totally worth it. Okay, so we added some glue here to our knots. How do you feel hypo cement care, compares to something like E6000? Okay, that's a really good question, Kelly. The I. The only things that I use E6000 for, and it's another great glue, and you could do it, you could use E6000 here. The reason that I don't is because it never has that precision tip on it, you know? You pretty much have to squeeze it out and then use, you know, um, a toothpick or something really small and then add your, your glue that way. You can't really use it straight from the container. It tends to dry up really, really fast. I've never been able to use an entire container, you know, an entire tube of E6000 before it dries up. I do use it though, and I have it. I just like the smaller applicator tip here with the Hypo Cement. The E6000 will dry and it makes things kind of rubbery, but it's also really, really good for, I know I've given you a couple of reasons why I don't use it. Let me tell you why I do use it. It's really good for um, gluing cabochons to things or gluing metals together, I would definitely use the E6000 instead of the Hypo Cement when I'm going to glue two pieces of metal together or um, something that has a full backing to it. Any kind of, you know, um, your Swarovski pieces that have that foil backing, sometimes some glues can eat through that. The E6000 doesn't. So I hope I answered your question. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for asking. Those are really good questions and that's why I'm here, you guys. I know you guys wanna see a project, but if you ever have questions, even if they're unrelated, I can answer them here live or you know, you can send me a message and I will get to them as soon as the video is over. Okay, so like I said, I've added the glue here and now I'm gonna let this dry. You wanna sit this to the side and let this dry probably both. Andrea, I have not done both earrings yet. You want to sit this to the side and you want to let this dry for about 30 minutes at least. Overnight is what it says on the packaging. I can never wait that long, but give it a good 30 minutes before you come in and then you're going to trim off, okay? You're going to trim off your ends. And you can see mine were not super, super clean, but when you flip it over, well, you do see that one a little bit, but... I try to trim my ends so that when you flip it back over to the front, you don't see them. I didn't get that one clipped close enough. Okay. So you can see you just want to trim all that off. All right. So now we're ready to do the rest. This is the fun part where we get to put the earring together. Here's another one that I did. I actually had a bunch of these on hand. <laughs> I did a bunch of these because I wanted to be sure that I had enough of these that were already done you know, to show you guys. So I am gonna trim off some of this even more. That's another thing, you know, if you feel like the glue hasn't dried and you trim it off, let it dry overnight and trim the rest of it off if you want to. So I promise, once that hypo cement goes on there, it's not gonna come undone. See, now you never know that there was a knot there at all. Looks good. All right, so let's turn this into an earring. Doing this part is pretty much the easy part. Now. I am, let's see, I'm going to start by putting our little things, our little dangles down here on the bottom. Okay, I'm going to use, let's see here, what do we do? I'm going to use one of those cowrie shells. I misplaced it. Okay, so we're going to use one of these shells and we're going to use these little starfish guys. So let's get these ready to go and then I'll show you how we're going to attach them. The cowrie shell, it, it's not drilled. Okay, but that's okay because it has an open back. So a six millimeter jump ring is gonna be able to hook through. Okay, so there's nothing that I need to do to this guy yet. I'm just gonna sit him to the side with a jump ring. And I've done a wrapped loop on one of my starfish. I'm gonna do one on another. So you wanna take a head pin and thread this on. Okay. 
what would you use to glue pearls on the mounted jewelry? Uh, hypo cement. I use hypo cement with all my pearls. And I'm pretty, I'm pretty particular when it comes to pearls because I really don't want to damage them at all. So hypo cement is the only thing I trust with the pearls. Okay, so I'm going to grab that wire with my chain nose pliers. And you can see this is not a flat surface because the starfish is where the hole is positioned is kind of off to the side. That may, actually makes it easier to do a wrapped loop on this guy than if it were this one here, down here. So pick your hole wisely as far as where you want to do your wrapped loop. Okay, so I'm grabbing the wire. I'm going to bend that wire 90 degrees. Okay, and then I'm going to come in with my round nose pliers and place that wire between the barrel of the pliers. And then I'm going to go up and over. Okay, and now I'm going to adjust, just flipping the pliers over in my hand so that I can go ahead and make that loop all the way around. Okay, putting it back onto the pliers, and then I'm going to switch hands. Okay, and now I'm going to take another pair of pliers and wrap around the straight section of wire that's coming out of the top of the bead. And I'm going to wrap around about four times, maybe three, it just depends. I'm going to go for four. And you can push the starfish around. You can see how I'm making sure that as I'm, as I'm wrapping, well, it's kind of hard for you to tell. As I'm wrapping, I'm pushing this guy around so that I can get to those pieces of wire, okay? So in my opinion, he was drilled perfectly for this because otherwise he would have been kind of hard to, to wrap. It was a very good placement of his hole. See, so there was a perfect amount of room to get four wraps around, okay? Where do you find the starfish and the seashells? They are part of the Waikiki collection. Um, well, part of the bigger collection of the Destination Hawaii collection from Jesse James Beads. They are brand new. These guys are fresh new babies. Aren't they cute? Love it. All right, so you're gonna do two of those. One of them I already did. Okay. And now, like I said, with this guy, we're just going to add a jump ring to him. We're not going to do anything special. And to attach our jump rings. Now, you could have, as you were knotting, you could have incorporated beads or charms on jump rings as you were knotting. And that's great if you are not a beginner. If you are a beginner, this is the way I suggest attaching things to this, okay? I'm going to use a beading awl just because that's what I have on hand. You can use a safety pin, you can use an eye pin, anything that has a nice little pointy tip on it, okay? You're going to try to find the center, and you're just going to eyeball it. I don't want to count all these knots. If you want to count out your knots and divide them in half and then find the center that way, more power to you, but I am just not living that life. So <laughs> I'm just looking for the knot that's in the center and this guy right here looks pretty close, okay? He might be a little off, but that's okay, we don't care. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the end of this and I'm gonna stick it, you see that loop that we talked about, that little curve that shows you what side you wanna work on. I'm gonna stick the awl right there and just push just a little bit. And what's gonna happen is, you can see, it made just a little tiny hole. There's already a hole there. All I'm doing is just opening that hole up just a little bit more to make it easy to slip a jump ring in there. Okay, so like I said, you could do anything here. You use a head pin or whatever you've got. You don't have to use a beading awl to do that. But all you're doing is just opening that up just a little bit to make it easier to thread this guy on. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna put the cowrie shell in the middle. So we're gonna go ahead and open up a jump ring. This is a six millimeter jump ring. And the six millimeter jump ring was the perfect size to clear the side of the cowrie shell, okay? So, just gonna loop him in. Oops, <laughs> maybe not. It helps to go from the back. There we go. All right, so you can see I've looped my six millimeter jump ring through the cow cowrie shell. Going in from the back seems to make it a little bit smoother. 
okay? And now what I want to do is I'm going to take my jump ring. I'm going to figure out the best way to hold on to it here. Okay, so I'm going to take my jump ring and I want to go through that little hole that I created with my awl. And actually, it probably would make more sense to go down through instead of back up through. All right, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do the jump ring first and then attach the shell just so you can see better. So I'm having trouble holding on to that guy. All right, so we found that center. Let's see, it was this one. Looping through, okay. And now I just want to add my shell and then I'm going to close my jump ring back up. If I can hold on to everything. <laughs> Well, you're giving me a little trouble here. There is room, I promise, because I did it earlier. There we go. Just took a second. All right. So now we're just going to close that jump ring. And now our shell, and you can see there was plenty of room. He's got some dangle and everything. He's not squished up there. He was just giving me a little trouble. So he's attached, okay? And that marked our center and he might be a little off center but like I said that's totally okay nobody is ever gonna look at your earrings and count all those knots to you know to check you <laughs> all right so now I want to count over six of those little humps and I'm gonna stick another jump ring through there okay one two three four five six this is the sixth one I just want to stick my awl or whatever I've got, safety pin, whatever, in there and just open that. See, so you can see that blue nail polish coming through the back. So I know that that hole is big enough to add my jump ring. So I'm going to add, or I'm going to open rather, my jump ring with my pliers. Yes, sometimes we need more hands. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, thread my jump ring through and then I'm going to attach my my little C star here and close it back. All right, and now we're going to count six over from the other side. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. There's the sixth one sticking my beading all in just to open that up just enough to get a jump ring through. And we're gonna add the other little star to that side. And then we're gonna attach our stuff in the center and you will have a completed earring. And I really, really love these, you guys, because they, like I said, they're super lightweight. A lot of times I shy away from big earrings because I'm afraid that they're gonna be heavy, but the hemp and the memory wire is really not heavy at all. I mean, like they're, they're featherweight, very nice. Okay, so there are our dangles for the bottom, ready to go. Thank you, Michelle. I love this project too. I love it when I, I put something together and I'm really excited about it. This is one of those. Really excited about this set of earrings. Okay, so you can see with the finished earring, I've got a lot of things going on here. I'm using several jump rings to make connections here. Okay, so I've got three six millimeter jump rings and then a four millimeter jump ring that's hanging from the center. I just used a four millimeter jump ring because that's that's just kind of my go-to. You can use another six here if you want to. It doesn't have to be a four, okay? It's up to you. I know a lot of people don't like to use the four millimeter jump rings because they're small and they can be kind of a pain, okay? But it's, it's totally, it'll look fine. It's totally up to you. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make this little beaded link here in the middle and attach the tassel and then we're going to attach it to the earring with all those jump rings okay so this little guy came in that waikiki mix and isn't he pretty just this little shell minty color love him so we're going to thread him onto an eye pin instead of a head pin okay now we're going to make a wrapped loop at the top but one thing that i want you to take in to consideration so that everything hangs correctly and we don't have to go back and change anything I want my wrapped loop to go in the opposite direction of the loop that's on the bottom here. Okay, so in order to do that, I'm just going to turn him to the side and make my wrapped loop just like I normally would. Does that make sense? <laughs> All right, so is that right? Oh, it doesn't matter. 
All right, so I bend that wire 90 degrees. We may end up turning this guy anyway. It doesn't make any difference. Okay, now I'm gonna come in with my round nose pliers and we're gonna go up and over. Okay. Repositioning. There's our loop. And I have glue on my finger. <laughs> All right, switching hands. All right, and now I'm just gonna wrap. And I've got enough room to do at least three. We'll see if there's room for four. There might be, there might not be. Yep, I've got room for four. Always like to double check before I commit, you know? All right, so there's our four loops. And that's exactly what I wanted. I want that loop to go one way and that loop on the bottom to go the other way. Okay, when I clip this off, I'll show you again, just so you can see if you are not real sure what I'm talking about. Okay, so one loop, that top wraps loop is going this direction. And you can see the bottom loop is going the opposite direction. That's exactly what we were going for. Okay, so now we're going to take our little tassel. I love this guy. He's so pretty. He's got a jump ring on him and we're going to open this jump ring. Okay. And we're going to thread him on to the bottom loop. That's not a wrapped loop. Okay. So just thread that on there and then close that jump ring back. Now, if you want to, you can turn your jump ring so that now the opening of that jump ring is tucked inside the tassel. So you don't have to worry about anything coming undone. Okay. All right, now we are going to add a four millimeter jump ring to the top of this guy. And this is where I said, you can use a six millimeter jump ring here instead. It makes no difference. Okay, I'm gonna open that and put that on the top. And I'm gonna go ahead and close that. And we're gonna thread all of this together all at the same time. The jump ring's a little off, that's okay. All right, so I've got a nice closed connection there. I'm going to sit this guy down. Okay, so we're working with three six millimeter jump rings to make all of our connections at the top. So I'm going to open one of these and I'm going to thread it on to the one of the loops on top of our memory wire and I'm going to go ahead and close it. And I'm going to do the same thing over here on the other side. I'm just going to go ahead and attach that jump ring and close it up. And now this last jump ring, this guy's got a big job. He's going to hold everything together. So what we need to do is we need to open him up and he's going to have to thread through both jump rings as well as the jump ring holding our stuff in the middle. Okay. And our ear wire. You can attach the ear wire later, but I feel like I've got this guy open. I may as well just go ahead and use it while, while the getting's good. So you can see I've thread him through one and now I'm holding him with my fingers. I'm gonna go ahead and thread on the four millimeter jump ring with our tassel. And then I'm gonna hook him to the other jump ring on the other side and I haven't closed him yet. Before I do that, I'm gonna thread on the ear wire and then close him up. And your earring's done. Isn't that pretty? So everything with all those jump rings at the top and the loops from your memory wire, there's probably a more tidy way to do all of that, but I really think that it hangs nicely with all of those jump rings. If that's too much hardware for you, I'm sure you could figure out an alternative, but I don't mind it. I don't mind it at all because it makes the earring hang nicely. It makes the tassel hang nicely and the ear, ring, the ear wire is going in the right direction too. All right, so let's lay the other one down so we can appreciate just how beachy and fun those earrings are. Are they not great? I really love them. I'm, I'm a huge fan. I'm gonna wear these. <laughs> I will probably wear them all for the rest of the weekend and all through next week. I'm just a sucker for hemp. That's where I started making jewelry. So macrame and knotting are just, you know, they are right next to my heart. So I hope you
you guys like these earrings, guys. I'm going to flip you around. Let's see here. Ooh, hello. <laughs> All right. Flip you around and scoot back so you're not going right at my nose. All right. So thank you. Thank you, Joan. Thank you, Pam, everybody. So glad everybody joined us today to make these earrings. I hope you guys enjoyed them. I think they're a lot of fun. And, you know, kind of thinking outside the box. I mean, who would think to, you know, macrame on some memory wire and turn them into earrings. So fun, easy project. Once you get the knot down, you can whip these guys up in about 30 minutes. That's not a super long project. Definitely not a weekend long project. You can, you can get these guys together pretty quickly and use some of your beautiful JJB beads um, from the New Destination Hawaii collection. I totally forgot I was going to show you guys this shark tooth up close and I completely forgot. I'm going to give you another another glimpse of it here. Try to hide my light. Mm, mm, mm. I love it. I love it. I love it. I'm going to turn it into something you guys and then I'm going to show it to you so you can see just how beautiful this is. It's it's really something. It's definitely stunning. It's I love that it's you know it's a one of a kind. So you can know that when you're buying from Jesse James Beads, you're getting the good stuff, you guys. <laughs> All right, so that's it for me. I will be with you guys again next week. Can I hold them up next to your ear? I certainly can. And you know what? You've just brought up something. See how big and beautiful this guy is? Okay, so since I'm holding this up to my ear, and you can see that's a big earring. I mean, you've got to commit when you're... <laughs> when you're wearing these guys, but they're lightweight. Like I said, they're, you know, I love them, but I like them hanging this direction. Okay. Let me turn this light off. I'm sorry. There, much better. Okay. So I like them hanging this direction when I wear them. However, if you wanted to, you could turn your ear wire the other direction so that they, they hang side to side. Okay, so that you're getting that profile of them instead of the full on shot. It's really just up to you and you can turn your um, your ear wire so you can wear it either way. If it coming on straight on at you is not your style, you can definitely flip that around and <laughs> make it work for you. So, wow, next to the ear they work. I agree. I agree. I love them. I think they're great. They're super summery and beachy and just beautiful, fun stuff. So. All right, like I was saying, that's it for me, you guys. I will see you guys next week. The time will be a little bit different. And if you guys feel like joining me tomorrow on my Facebook page, you can do that as well. I'm working with Jesse James Beads again because you know I love the Jesse James Beads. So join me tomorrow at 1 p.m. on my Facebook if you would like to see some more fun projects. We're making uh, necklaces, necklace components that are super cool. So um, if not, I will be back here with you guys next week. And I will let Sarah post the time and everything for that. Because it will be a little bit different since next week is a holiday for us here in the United States. All right. You guys have a great rest of the afternoon and a wonderful weekend. And I will talk to you guys next week. <laughs> if I don't talk to you tomorrow. Okay. Bye, guys.